Ladies and gentlemen, hit subscribe right now. Let's get this segment going. And I want to thank you for your support. We're on our way. We're back again on our way to 200,000 subscribers. It's because of you. Get this segment. Share this segment. Hit subscribe right now. Senator Rand Paul says Chief Justice Roberts won't take Trump impeachment trial. January 23rd, 2021. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul claims Chief Justice Roberts can only try a sitting U.S. president on impeachment. I touched upon this on my last segment. As Democrats plunge ahead with a post-term impeachment trial of President Donald Trump, a key question remains, will Chief Justice Roberts take the case? Well, he can't. First of all, President Trump is no longer president. Secondly, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, okay, he did not, in a, in a court of law, he would not be found liable or guilty of, any, of committing any crime. He's protected under the First Amendment. So political speech is protected in this country. Although Democrats would like to change that, it still is protected. He, there should never have been protests that day. I condemn what took place. That should never have happened. Those five people should be alive today. But he did not tell people to go and, co- and commit these illegal acts. He did not uh, advocate they do so. What he did was voice concerns from a political perspective that, of course, Democrats have now twisted and distorted and manipulated into, well, because he had the audacity to say what he did, that got people, um, like Trump supporters, are incapable of voicing their opinions without potentially engaging in such acts. So Trump should have known better, and it's his fault directly, even though in a court of law, that would not be the case. Alan Dershowitz, uh, Professor Turley, um, a lot of people, a lot of people have stated that's not the case at all. But here, Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky says he won't, he won't, making the, okay, Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky says he won't, making the exercise uh, a fake partisan impeachment. So, hold (laughs) So will, Ju- will Chief Justice Roberts take the case? Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky says he won't, making the exercise a fake partisan impeachment. The lawmaker told uh, Fox News' Sean Hannity on Friday, Paul claimed Roberts has, quote, privately said he's not supposed to come unless it's an impeachment of the president. According to the U.S. Constitution, when the president of the United States is tried, the chief justice shall preside, a requirement not made for any other impeachment case. If they don't have Roberts, which they won't, then there's no point to having this completely undermines the legitimacy of what's taking place. He did not tell people to commit those acts. Just like he didn't strong arm or leverage an oppo- uh, President Zelensky to investigate Biden. And by the way, his son Caligula is being investigated now by the federal government for potential laundering. And that's according to Politico. That's according to Politico. All you see, that's the thing. Like you don't need to listen to any absurd message boards. Oh, this person's gonna get arrested. This person you can just see at the end of the day, it's all out in front of you in the public record sources that, you know, liberals or the left or the media champions. So Politico, for example, is I would say the most objective, even though it's ext- even though it's a liberal publication, it's the most objective of all of the mainstream publications. They let Ben Shapiro, which was fantastic, and of course the left had you know this hysterical, um, apoplectic reaction as usual to any to anything objective. But they let ben, they published a, an article from Ben Shapiro, or they they published Ben Shapiro in one of the one of the uh, sections of the publication, and. Of course, the reaction was, "Oh my God! How could you? How could Politico give a voice to Ben Shapiro?" Well, ben Shapiro is one of the one of the um, he has the large one of the largest presence. He has he has one of the um, greatest voices in, in all of the internet in terms of subscribers and of ter- in terms of reach. So it's like you're not you're not you're not pre- protecting. See, Democrats think that ideas, thoughts emotions, sentiments, that they can control all of these things. Because God forbid, like, and you see it with Jimmy Dore and how he's been treated. 
The only, uh, the only attack against Jimmy Dore by the left, so Jimmy Dore just wants Medicare for all. He wants a floor vote of Med for Medicare for all. AOC and Bernie Sanders don't, apparently. The $20 million venture capital people don't. And so what they say is, oh my God, he's dividing the left. So always an appeal to emotion. We can't right now. It's not feasible. And because it's not feasible, you're causing division and discord. We need to unify. These are... Um, this uh, then they're calling him all these names and it's like the biggest grifters are the ones who don't want to live up to their ideals then they say all oh, the democratic party is our source of political influence the democratic party doesn't care about green party policies the medicare for all green new deal universal basic income these are green party policies the green new deal resolution is not legislation okay so if if the if the if the planet is about to end, a resolution isn't going to save anybody. But anyway, that's, that's what Democrats, Democrats and media, oftentimes what they do is they create this world, their own world, and, and people truly believe it. There are people who have completely had their minds just distorted by this, by program, by this nonstop coverage of Trump. President Trump made some missteps. He had 92% negative media coverage, but he also took a, a baseball bat and just bashed a hornet's nest every single day on Twitter. And then all the hornets and everything, you know, he just threw chum in the water and then the, the sharks would go into a greater frenzy. But I mean, he did that too often. So now they're incapable of any objective analysis of Trump. He is a monster. Everything is his fault and Republicans aren't defending him. The people who did defend him, Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz, are now hiding under a rock. They should go on a media offensive. I keep saying that. But this is actually hilarious because Justice Roberts, as lawmakers debate the legitimacy of impeachment, the Biden administration continue to keep its distance from the issue of golf. Yeah, right. Congress is going to do what Congress does. Uh, okay, there are, yeah, yeah, right. One thing Trump's uh, adversaries in Congress appear to be doing is grasping at straws. Several Dems have floated the idea of pushing the Pushing Trump with the 14th Amendment's rule that shuts those who engaged in, okay, rebellion out of the elected office. He didn't, he didn't want, he used the words peacefully and patriotically. The problem, unfortunately, was that President Trump was blindsided. He's been blindsided numerous times this presidency. He didn't realize, he didn't realize that there was the potential for this thing to happen. There should never have been protests that day because there wasn't a national dialogue we needed discourse, a national dialogue. We needed, for example, Giuliani and Jenna Ellis and others, Lynn Wood, Sidney Powell, we needed these people to go on Joe Rogan, Lynn, uh, uh, Tim Poole, Anthony Brian Logan, uh, Brandon Tatum, um, you know, like all of these, all of the channels out there that, that have a huge presence. They should have also gone to MSNBC and CNN. How about going and having... A combative exchange with Anderson Cooper or anyone. Like a verbal exchange. Why not? It's okay. What's the worst that can happen? If you have the facts on your side, do so. And that's what Josh Hawley should do right now. That's what uh, Ted Cruz should do right now. They should have a testy, um, heated verbal exchange of ideas. Why did you support Trump? Well, the Pino Navarro report. Well, that's baseless. Well, the Steele dossier. Oh, well, that's well, it's different. Well, not really. You can go back and forth. But at least you get the ideas out there. Well, you investigate your suspicions. You don't allow us to investigate our suspicions. That's interesting. Baseless, baseless. Well, it's actually based on this. What were your allegations based on? Oh, Clapper and Brennan. Okay. That's not baseless? No, those are good people. You can go back and forth. But there wasn't that exchange of ideas. There wasn't that discourse, the debate. There wasn't a forum where we could, as a country, we have 320 million Americans. We have one person, one doctor that we trust. Does that make sense? 
We have 320, the leading economy in the world, the leading democracy in the world. We have 320 million Americans. We're the third most populous country in the world. We have one vantage point in terms of politics. That's it. Media has one vantage point. We have zero debate in this country, zero political discourse. The political discourse in this country runs through the lenses of apoplectic, fuming, seething, angry, hysterical, uh, you know, indignant, morally superior liberals. And so you cannot, if you deviate from the norm, from the groupthink, you are excommunicated, you've engaged in blasphemy, you're a heretic, and you should never have existed. Oh, and by the way, you've engaged in speech that isn't protected by the First Amendment. How? Because they make absurd leaps of logic. We need, we needed President Trump, hopefully with a, with a new political party, we needed some way to create a discussion, a, an exchange of ideas. Now, we can't have, you know, the Republicans, what they do is, the reason that Democrats have, you know, Hollywood and, and New York Times, Washington Post, MSNBC, CNN, and, and all of their, like, the way they see the world it, you know, it's pumped through the airwaves uh, on a, you know, every single second. The reason that there's no pushback from the Republicans is Republicans are absolutely petrified of media. They're afraid of getting the treatment that Trump received. So they just, they don't want to, they don't want to defend President Trump. And so, I mean, it, it could have been, look, they didn't even defend Trump for Trump Russia, which was absurd nonsense. They thought they could derive a great deal of uh, political influence by keeping Trump at bay. They just hurt themselves. I mean, four years of Trump Russia hurt the entire Republican Party, and they were the culprits. The only reason you had Trump Russia is not because of Clapper, Brennan, Comey, Strzok, McCabe. Even though, by the way, I'll do a segment tonight, later tonight, on the steel, on the uh, the Durham probe. Devin Nunes wants that to heat up, and most Republicans now want, uh, you know, legal repercussions for the people who set up and framed Trump, like James Comey. Devin Nunes talked about James Comey uh, today. I keep telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the adversaries, that the, real, the biggest adversaries Trump faced, which I think is why he's going to start a political party eventually, is not the Democratic Party or James Clapper or, or Comey or Strzok or McCabe. Those people, we know what they're about. The biggest adversaries are Republicans like Jeff Sessions, who, by the way, a message board told you to trust. Mitt Romney, Ben Sass, Lisa Murkowski, Richard Burr, Paul Ryan. Okay, these people, how can you have any national discourse if these people are just parroting whatever Democrats say about a Republican president? Now, again, President Trump could have, instead of continually um, provoking them. See, it was good that he fought back, but at a certain point, he needed to let off the gas a bit. You can't go pedal to the metal all the time. There's a mo there are moments for diplomacy. There are moments for reaching out even when your adversary is trying to uh, undermine you at every turn. It's okay to play the game of politics. President Trump didn't like that game. He was not a politician, which was good, and at the end of the day, not so good. So, I mean, he, there's so many ways. This is a country of comebacks. This is a country of, re, like, people rebound. They come back. They, they, get, they, they, they survive things. They get, they, when, you get, when you fall down, you need to get back stronger than ever. That's what life is about, okay? If you, you fall down... You can only fall down, fall down so far, you get back up. You get back up. And President Trump, look, <laughs> the same people who say Trump is this monster despot, the, the same people in Hollywood who devoted their lives to disparaging Trump, if Trump started a reality show next month, they would be begging to be on that reality show. I'm not saying he will, but why not? <laughs> or whatever. He, he, I'm saying, like, they're, these pe like they're, the, the, Trump's detractors are the, the biggest, oftentimes, the biggest 
du- most duplicitous, disingenuous hypocrites on the planet. So, President Trump can definitely rebound politically. The Republican Party, when the primaries roll around in 2022, and especially 2024, the candidates that'll win will be candidates that, cl- that, that are closest to President Trump in terms of foreign policy and domestic policy. That will reshape the Republican Party forever. It will become far more of a populist political party than it ever was. And they'll outmaneuver Democrats. And nobody can argue for military interventions. Okay, President Trump limited and actually reversed U.S. foreign policy. We got peace deals, Abraham Accords, first president stepped foot in North Korea. That's what I love about Trump. That's why he was one of the great presidents ever, because he, he was able to accomplish these things, things that were thought to be impossible. He was the first president in decades not to have started a war. Then you get the imbeciles on the left. Oh, y'all, he did all start a military conflict. Oh, but he did this, this, and that, and that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, do you, you do realize that Hillary Clinton would have done those things and worse. She wanted a no-fly zone above Damascus. She would never have ended the uh, war in Afghanistan like Trump did. She would never have removed soldiers from Syria. She would never have presided over um, uh, the Abraham Accords, and, and she would never have been the first president to step foot in North Korea. She had a very belligerent and hawkish and militant viewpoint. Look what she did to Libya and, and Biden and President Obama. President Trump saved us from Clinton. My God Almighty, he should be given the Medal of Honor for that. He should be championed <laughs> forever for saving us from Madam Secretary. Who would have had a server, private servers in the Oval Office and that would have been, would have been okay. You can't prove anything. When Democrats get caught with their pants down, literally, actually, all, all the time, you can't prove anything. Well, Biden had, Biden's son had emails saying, thanks for letting us meet your father. While he was sitting vice president, as a flow of money came into uh, his son, and then his son gave him kickbacks. But you can't prove anything. Well, it's in the emails. You don't know if those emails are legitimate. They haven't, they could have simply said the emails were hacked or fabricated. They didn't because the emails are pristine. You, well, the computer repair person is linked to Steve Bannon. So that means it's not true. These people have no, the the problem is the breakdown of logic because of their contempt for Trump. They just, they, they, they don't see, by the way, don't ever debate anybody who has Trump derangement syndrome. You can tell them, hey, you know, I wanted Trump for foreign policy. They'll look at you like this. You know, I voted for Trump for these reasons. These are noble reasons, moral. They won't, it'll go in, out, ear. They won't even go in, out, in one ear. It'll just be like you never said anything. Then they'll go back, oh my God, he's so corrupt. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Chief Justice John Roberts is siding with Trump, which is fantastic. Which is absolutely fantastic and hilarious, my God. It's just so great. Give me your thoughts. Thank you so very, very much.